This is the type of equation you'll have to solve if you want to study maths at Oxford. What do I mean by this? Well, this is an equation where there's two unknowns, plus it's kind of difficult to make one the subject of the formula, to make alpha the subject, or to make beta the subject of the formula here. Um, now, of course, it's not exactly what you're going to be doing in an Oxford course, but this is the sorts of questions I can easily see coming up in the MAT or potentially in an interview as well. Anyway, let's get stuck into solving this. Let me be clear about what we have here. We want to find all ordered pairs, alpha, beta in the reals that solve this equation. Now, you could uh, mess about with this and plug in values of alpha and beta. Maybe you could stumble across a solution. Um, and this actually was inspired by a multiple choice question where there were four different options. And actually, I, I'm going to first show you a technique to eliminate some of those options. I guess here, we don't have the options, but I want to show you something that's pretty cool. Notice that this equation is very symmetric in terms of alpha and beta. In other words, if I was to swap the roles of alpha and beta, this equation would stay the same. Formally, if I call this function, let's say f of alpha beta, so 16 to the alpha squared plus beta minus 16 to the beta squared plus alpha uh, minus 1, or sorry, plus uh, like so. So essentially, we're looking for the roots of f. f of alpha beta is the same as f of beta alpha. Now, why is this uh, interesting? Well, this just basically means that uh, if I have a solution alpha beta, then I can swap the roles of beta and alpha, and that will give me another solution. So this would suggest that the number of solutions are even. But one thing we've got to be careful of is what if alpha and beta are the same? Well, then I can't, well, if I swap them, I get the same solution. So it's not really a new solution. So what we need to do is work out how many solutions are there where alpha equals beta. And this is quite nice because when alpha equals beta in this equation, you're going to get two lots of 16 to the alpha squared plus alpha equals one. So 16 to the alpha squared plus alpha equals a half. And now what, you know, if I take log base two of both sides, uh, I get alpha squared plus alpha equals, uh, sorry, log base 16 of both sides. 16 to the what gives me a half. That's a negative quarter. And if you solve this equation here, there's only one solution, alpha equals minus half. And you can check that that is genuinely a solution to this equation. Okay, great. So we get one solution to this equation. And this immediately proves that the number of solutions to this equation is odd because we've got one solution where alpha and beta are the same, and any other solution will come in a pair where you can swap around alpha and beta. So at this point, if there were options, I could rule out any even numbers. Okay, great. How do we work out what the answer is? How many solutions are there to this equation? Well, I'm going to use something called the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality. This is something which maybe you haven't learned in school, but I think is such a useful tool for these sorts of questions. How do we use that here? But what does the AMGM inequality say? Well, it says that if you have, uh, I'm going to use a special case of it, but if you have x and y positive numbers, then uh, x plus y over 2 is bigger than or equal to the square root of xy. So if I look at this equation here, I'm firstly going to divide both sides by 2. So I'm going to get a half, which equals uh, 16 to the alpha squared plus beta, plus 16 to the beta squared plus alpha over 2. Now, according to the AMGM inequality, this is at least the square root of 16 to the alpha squared plus beta times 16 to the alpha, uh, beta squared plus alpha, like so. But now, just using kind of rules, this is the same as 16 to the alpha squared plus alpha plus beta squared plus beta, and I can write 16 as 4 squared, and so this is going to be 4 to this power, but now I'm just going to complete the square on this. It's going to be alpha plus a half squared plus beta plus a half squared minus a quarter minus a quarter, so minus a half, like so. So I've got 4 to this power is less than or equal to a half. Great. But actually, this, this should, well, we should notice something here because 4 to the power of, well, this thing here is always at least 0 because it's to the sum of two square numbers. And then I'm subtracting a half. So all in all, the power of 4 is at least negative a half. And, you know, if we think of a graph of 4 to the x, it looks like this. So this is y equals 4 to the u or something. Well, that's u. Maybe I'll call that v just to avoid confusion with the x and y I mentioned earlier. So v equals 4 to the u, but notice it's an increasing function. And um, so we're saying that this uh, power here is at least negative a half, which is somewhere here. 
And so that means that four to the power of something must be at least four to the minus a half. So four to the alpha plus a half squared plus beta plus a half squared minus a half must be at least four to the minus a half. But four to the minus a half is just one half. And so we've got that this expression here is both less than or equal to a half, but it's also bigger than or equal to a half. And thus the only value it can take is a half. And that's precisely when the sum of these two squares here is zero. And that's when alpha is minus a half and beta is minus a half. And that's the solution we'd already found. And therefore the number of solutions to this equation here is one.